What's up everybody, welcome to another episode of the Poker Vlog. Today we are actually headed to Downstream Resort and Casino for another cash game session. Going to be playing a pretty short session. Uh, the wife and I are meeting some people down here for dinner and drinks and to just kind of hang out a little bit. Should be pretty good. I'm going to hop in the cash game streets hopefully pretty quickly without having to wait too long to get a seat and we can get some hands in, hopefully make a little bit of money, play a nice quick little session since we're going to be all the way down here. Like I've said before, heading to Downstream is quite the drive. It's about an hour each way something like that so it's two hours round trip it takes a little bit of time out of the time that I'm gonna be able to play but that's gonna be all right as you can see it's a beautiful day let's go ahead and use it by playing some poker gonna get into some hands hopefully you guys uh, like it please smash that thumbs up button it really helps with the uh, video getting recommended to other people so yeah and it really just helps the channel so thanks Let's jump into some hands. The very first hand we sit down at the table, we have ace queen offsuit from the hijack. We've got $300 in front of us. The button straddles, it limps to under the gun plus one, who is a super aggressive uh, psycho regular. I always see him playing incredibly splashy. I know he plays higher stakes, so maybe he plays more normally there. I don't really know. He makes it $20. I just make the call. Huge mistake here. No idea what I was doing. Maybe I was thrown off because this is my first hand at the table. The button shoves all in for $71. Then the Psycho from Under the Gun Plus One shoves all in for about $700 total. I go ahead and fold against just the Psycho. I would maybe call and get stacks in with Ace Queen. That's how crazy he plays. Unfortunately, I don't. The board runs out. King 5-4 turns a 3, rivers a 10. The button shows Ace Queen and the Psycho mucks his hand. So very unfortunate that we can't uh, get part of that. Obviously, our Ace Queen would have been good if the Psycho uh, had shoved on us and we'd have got it in. Oh well, on to the next one. Very quickly after that hand, we look down at Ace-10 of Diamonds from the big blind, starting to stand with about 280 now. The Psycho on the button straddles. I go ahead and make it $20. Middle position one calls, the Psycho calls, and we're off to see a flop. The flop comes down, I fantastic one for us. Flop is 10, 10, 4. So obviously we flop basically the nuts here. I go ahead and bet out $25 repping all the big aces like ace, king, queen, jacked that I'm going to have. Middle position one calls and the button, the psychopath, folds saying that he was raising if she hadn't made the call. So we miss out on a ton of money because of this other player in the hand. Really, really sucks. I think this was a full double up spot coming from the psycho who would have definitely just put us on ace king or ace queen and been down to bluff off his entire, well, not his entire stack, but double up our entire stack. Turn comes down, the king clubs. I bet out $55 this time, which I think is a big mistake. And the middle position one player folds. So we don't get very much out of flopping trips at all. Definitely a spot where we were hoping for a full double up against the psycho and we don't get it. He <laughs> lied. A little bit later on, not very much later on at all, I look down at Ace Queen offsuit from the cutoff, starting to handle with about $370. Middle position two, the Psycho, opens to $10 over three limpers, which I think is a terrible size. I go ahead and three bet to $45. Under the gun, limper calls, and the Psycho in middle position two also makes the call. Flop is a whiff for us. Flop is jack 3-3. Three, three. So I don't know what to do here. I end up checking, which I think is terrible. I should definitely see bet and probably be willing to get it in. Although I guess he's going to get it in with all of his like pocket fours through eights or tens or whatever. So I don't really know what to do here. I was just hoping to hit a queen or ace and see if we can get stacks in against this crazy person. Turn comes down the 10 of hearts. So we add a gut shot straight draw. Doesn't seem terrible. Action checks through again. So I'm not sure um, what I'm thinking here. I don't think checking after I check the flop is terrible. I guess I've pretty much given up on this hand. River comes down the 10 of clubs. So now we have a double paired board. I've got ace high, so I have a pretty uh, strong holding in this exact spot. The action checks to middle position two, who bets out $65. I think about it for not very long before making the call. I think he's gonna be bluffing a ton here. Um, he definitely has threes in his range and tens in his range, but is he really going to check tens on the turn and then uh, play it like this on the river? I don't really know. Um, under the gun folds and the psychopath shows us king 10 offsuit. So he called our open with king 10 offsuit. Not so bad. Uh, maybe a C bet just gets the job done on the flop. So maybe that's a big mistake by us. I don't think calling this 65 is terrible. I think we're going to be right a large percentage of the time here. So, oh, well, we lose that one too. Not too much later on. I look down at King Jack suited. 
I open up to $15 preflop, and there's this crazy old man who's clearly extremely inebriated. The psycho at the table has been buying him drink after drink. I haven't been there very long, but he's slurring his words. He's clearly super intoxicated. And he's been making large raises uh, often, even in spots where it doesn't make any sense. So anyway, I open up King Jack. He raises to $100. I think about it for a little bit, and I'm not really down to just get in stacks here with King Jack. I'm going to be behind any ace or any small pocket pair. And after all, it is an old dude. So he hasn't been showing down any weak hands. He's just been playing very erratically and with some very weird sizings. So I go ahead and make the fold here. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should have just like gambled it up here. I'm not really sure. A little bit later on, I look down at ace four of clubs from the button, starting the hand off with about $160. There's several limpers. I go ahead and make it $15 to go. I think that's a mistake. I should make it probably 20 or 25, but I'm in a weird spot with a very weird stack size. I get two callers. Um, so hoping that we can have some sort of reasonable flop. Flop comes down ace high with one club, but it's all Broadway cards, so things are pretty weird. I go ahead and we've got a bunch of limp, and we had a bunch of limp callers in here, so I don't really know what their ranges are gonna look like. Obviously it's pretty hard to define somebody's limp call range in a one-two game. I put out $20 and both players call, including the crazy old drunk guy. Turn comes down the five of diamonds, so kind of whatever. I bet out $40, leaving myself a hundred bucks behind. The crazy, the lady at the end who's been playing extremely random hands, uh, she's shown down some really weird stuff, makes it a hundred dollars. So this should have just been an insta, get out of town, Kenny, this is dumb. The uh, crazy old man folds. I go ahead and shove all in slash call. Um, I think this is pretty bad. Uh, if that had been the five of clubs, so I had the nut flush draw to go along with this, maybe that would have made it a, lot of, a little bit better. Unfortunately, she flips over king 10. So she just flopped the nuts on us, no big deal. Uh, with us flopping top pair, it was gonna be pretty hard for us to get away from. I think I could have though. Very unhappy with how I played in this session. This is definitely a uh, good example of why you should never, ever, ever, ever play uh, super short sessions. I knew I only had around an hour to play, so yeah, had dinner plans, so yeah. Yikes, terrible, don't like it, don't do this. I think I got fairly unlucky. Having the Psycho at my table was a great stroke of luck. Unfortunately, I just never got a chance to capitalize on it. I think I got super unlucky in that hand where I had trips. I think I got fairly unlucky to run into his full house on that double paired board. But anyway, that's it. Sometimes you lose, especially when you put yourself in a weird spot to play very short sessions. So, oh well. We will get on to the next one very soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, yeah, just unhappy with how I played this hand. Don't have a whole lot more to say. Unhappy with how I played in this session. Have a good one, guys. We'll be back.